Hello dear students. Today we will discuss about the joint time frequency analysis. We have discussed the autocorrelation function mainly that is time related. We have also related, uh, we have discussed frequency related means spectral analysis we have discussed and we have seen that spectral analysis techniques represent powerful signal processing tools if one is not especially concerned with the signal timing and also spectral methods provide a complete or appropriate solution for waveforms that are stationary that is the waveforms that do not change in their basic or mainly statistical properties over the length of the analysis However, many waveforms, particularly of biological origin, are not stationary and change substantially in their properties over time. For example, the EEG signal changes considerably depending upon various internal states of the subject, for example, meditation, sleep, or eyes closed. So timing information is often of primary interest in many biomedical signals. So approaches to extract both time and frequency information from a waveform can be the time frequency methods or they can be the time scale methods mainly a wavelet analysis. So in this chapter or in this lecture I'll mainly concentrate on the time frequency methods. So first in this is short time Fourier transform that is the spectrogram. It is based on the approach of slicing the waveform of interest into a number of short segments and performing the analysis on each of these segments usually using the Fourier transform. A window function is applied to a segment of data effectively isolating that segment from the overall waveform and then the Fourier transform is applied to this segment. This is termed as spectrogram or we can also call it as short time Fourier transform since we are applying the Fourier transform to a segment which is shorter often much shorter than the overall waveform. The basic equation if you see equation number one that is uh, the basic equation for the spectrogram in the continuous domain. So here this wt minus tau is nothing but it is a window function to select a particular segment from the uh, signal represented by x tau or xt you can say and tau here is the variable that slides that window across the waveform. So this you can see <coughs> we have chosen a window and that is a sliding over signal xt. We can also represent in discrete version of the same that is you can see x capital X mk which is equal to summation n equal to 1 to n xn then wn minus k into e raised to power minus j n m divided by n. Now what are the main two problems with the spectrogram? Selecting an optimal window length for data segments that contain several features may not be possible. And we have another time frequency trade-off that is if we shorten the data length that is capital N to improve time resolution, it will reduce the frequency resolution which is approximately 1 by NTS. Here TS is the sampling time. Shortening the data segment could also result in the loss of low frequencies that are no longer fully included in the data segment. So the window is made smaller to uh, improve the time resolution then what will happen the frequency resolution is degraded or vice versa. This time frequency trade-off has been equated to an uncertainty principle where the product of the frequency resolution that is mainly expressed as bandwidth and time t must be greater than some minimum. So we are telling it is a bt that is product of bandwidth and time should be greater than or equal to 1 by 4 pi. 
Now we have another kind of distribution that is Wigner-Willey distribution, which is a special class of the similar distributions uh, of Cohen's distribution, or we can say Cohen's class. So this approach was developed by Wigner for you mainly use in physics, but later it was applied to signal processing by Willey. That's why we are calling it as a Wigner-Willey distribution. So this WVD is a special class of, as I mentioned, a wide variety of similar transformations under Cohen's class of distributions. This is the approach that harkens back to the early use of autocorrelation function for calculating the power spectrum. The equation we know that for computing autocorrelation in both the continuous and discrete form, as you can see, in continuous form it is uh, integration within the limits minus infinity to plus infinity xt xt plus tau as uh, d tau uh, dt equation number four and that is dt and then in time domain you can uh, see in discrete case that is summation k equal to one to capital m x k x of k plus n so here t uh, tau and n are the shift of the waveform with respect to itself In the standard autocorrelation function, time is integrant or summed out of the result, and this result uh, means autocorrelation function is only a function of lag, or we can say just shift tau. So the Wigner Willey use a variation of the autocorrelation function where time remains in the result. So this is achieved by comparing the waveform with itself for all possible lags, but instead of integrating over time. The comparison is done for all possible values of time. You can see this equation. So this gives rise to this equation of so-called, we are uh, telling it as instantaneous autocorrelation function as continuous and discrete case. You can see respectively in equation number six and seven. So in continuous case, it is uh, now we are keeping C T and top both the parameters here because it is instantaneous. So it is also taking time into consideration. So x t plus tau by 2 and here x uh, is this is, is representing complex conjugate of t minus like tau by 2. And similarly we can write in discrete case x k plus n and x complex k minus n. So again here tau and n are the time lags as in autocorrelation and the star symbol represents the complex conjugate of the signal x. The instantaneous autocorrelation function retains both the lags in time and is accordingly a two-dimensional function. The classic method of computing the power spectrum was to take the Fourier transform as we have seen uh, that is power spectral density of the standard autocorrelation function. So the wigner willey distribution echoes this approach by taking the Fourier transform of the instantaneous autocorrelation function but now only along the tau that is lag dimension. So this results in a function of both frequency and time. And when the one dimensional power spectrum was computed using the autocorrelation function, it was common to filter the autocorrelation function before taking the Fourier transform to improve the features of resulting power spectrum. While in wigner willey distribution, no such filtering is done. So the general equation for determining a time frequency distribution in case of uh, Cohen's class is, you can see equation number eight. So in this equation, this G V tor basically represents the, uh, it provides the two dimensional filtering of the instantaneous autocorrelation. And this is also known as the kernel. So this is a kernel which basically differentiates the different kind of distribution in this Cohen's class of distribution. So it is this filter-like function, as I mentioned, that differentiates between the various distributions in Cohen's class and rest of the integrand, if you see, it is nothing but the Fourier transform of the instantaneous autocorrelation function. So for wigner willey distribution, there is no filtering and this kernel therefore is simply one. And the general equation eight after integration by dv 
reduces as you can see equation number 9 in continuous as well in discrete case so we can write like this here t is equal to n t s and f is nothing but m by n t s so there are some advantages of this wigner willey distribution it is the greatest uh, what is its greatest strength is that it produces a remarkably good picture of the time frequency structure and also it has favorable marginal that is related to the summation over time or frequency to the signal energy at that particular time or frequency and also with the conditional moments. Now the conditional moment uh, of a uh, Vignavilla distribution, it also has the significance and you can see this F instantaneous uh, is 1 by Pt uh, integration minus infinity to plus infinity f rho phi t f t d f so here p t is nothing but the marginal in time so this conditional moment as i mentioned this is nothing but instantaneous frequency so in wigner will distribution it is also possible to recover the original signal except for a constant from the distribution and the transformation is invariant to shifts in time and frequency. One thing is to note is the property of WVD which is not shared by the short time Fourier transform is finite support in time and frequency. Now what we mean by finite support in time it means that the distribution is zero before the signal starts and after it ends and the finite support in frequency means the distribution does not contain frequencies beyond the range of the input signal. We have some shortcomings with this method as the demonstration of energies at time frequency values where they do not exist and also it have negative regions that have no meaning. Also it has the poor noise properties. So this you can see a simple example this is a signal of modulated Gaussian's uh, signal and this is a spectrogram and this is the wigner willey distribution so you can see that it is not showing the extra uh, energies or extra uh, samples in the sequence when it ends or it has some very lower magnitude also we can see this uh, difference in two component signal one is x1 t and another is x2 you can see here in spectrogram it is showing a little bit of uh, these frequencies uh, with respect to some time but if you see in Wigner distribution there is a gap which is showing the difference between the two different signals now we have Joy Williams distribution that is another distribution in uh, Cohen's class and now in this case the kernel g v tau is no longer 1. So the general equation 8 we have seen for Cohen's class now it can be simplified into different ways. For any given kernel the integration with respect to the variable v can be performed in advance and since the rest of the transform that is the signal portion is not a function of v or use can be made of an intermediate function we are calling it as ambiguity function. So this Joy Williams distribution is also referred to as an exponential distribution as it has an exponential type kernel. So this is a kernel and also we are calling it as a determining function <coughs> Sorry, of the Joy Williams distribution. So it is e raised to power minus v square tau square by sigma and after integrating like using this equation number 12 g u tau is equal to uh, some integration minus infinity to plus infinity g v tau e raised to a j pi v u dv where this as i mentioned this is a, a kernel or we can say determining function so we get the distribution as this kernel uh, g t tau equal to under root sigma by pi by 2 tau e raised to power minus sigma t square by 4 tau square. So this Joy Williams distribution can also be used in modified form that incorporates a window when this form is considered as a class of reduced interference distributions and also it is represented as RID. 
So Choi Williams distribution has better noise characteristics than that of Vigna Willi distribution. Uh, we can see here the difference. So this is two component signal again and you can see Vigna Willi distribution it is still showing a little bit of difference or we can say frequencies when amplitude is very less or it is like ending and beginning of the second sig first signal and second signal respectively. But if you see in Choi Williams distribution uh, it is not showing that noisy component. So it is much better as compared to wigner willey distribution. We can see another example related to EEG. So this is a EEG signal uh, we have obtained for this the spectrogram. You can see it is not providing that much clear information as you can see in wigner willey distribution. Still it is showing some extra uh, frequency components and uh, but if you see in joy value distribution it is almost it is like uh, providing us the noise improvement over other methods so this is all in this lecture for these topics uh, you can refer to the book by dc ready that is biomedical signal processing principles and techniques so for now thank you so